Hello everyone, this is the video lecture for Calculus 1, Section 4.4, Indeterminate Forms. And basically I title it, Lopi Towels. Lopi Towels Rule. Now I know it looks like hospital, but there's not an S in there. And sometimes some book publishers put an S in there. I don't know. It's Lopi Towel. That's how you say it. Lopi Towel. Lopi Towel. Something like that. <laughs> Anyways, cool. What is Lopi Tau's rule? Let's talk about it. We got uh, if the limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x uh, results in, and you got 0 over 0 or infinity over infinity, and there's a couple more. Uh, but that's what we're going to focus on right now. So if you get one of these guys, then there's something special little, little rule here. The limit as x goes to a of f of x over g of x actually equals the limit as x goes to a of f prime of x over g prime of x. This is kind of your formula right here. This is kind of just saying when you can use it, because you can't use it every time. Uh, but this is actually a pretty phenomenal thing here. Um, you're going to use this in Calculus 2 and Calculus 3, all throughout the rest of this uh, class here in Cal 1. Uh, Lopi Tals is very important. It's one of those standard kind of formula things that you're going to have to know, and it's always tricky. <laughs> so uh, we're going to do a ton of examples, and it's going to be great, but at the same time, um, like the very first one I'm looking at here is a pretty tricky one. So here we go. We got x, or we got the limit as x goes to pi over 2 from the right, it's going to be important later, of cosine of x over 1 minus sine of x uh, is equal to what? Basically, we're doing a ton of limits today. Uh, okay, cool. So... I need to figure out what this would be, and uh, if I plug in the pi over 2, I'm just going to like do this. If I plug in the pi over 2, I got cosine at pi over 2, and I've got 1 minus sine of pi over 2. And so what we get here is a 0, and here 1 minus 1, so 0 over 0. And so you can see that this is kind of like, oh no, what do we do kind of thing, you know? Uh, well, you do lopi tals. We just, I just denote it with LH kind of thing, L dash H, lopi tals. Um, and then we could just basically take our derivatives of the top and bottom separately, thankfully. Uh, and then we could just get a new answer. So derivative of cosine is a negative sine. And then the derivative of 1 minus sine, the 1 goes away. Negative sine will go to a negative cosine. Two negatives cancel. And what you essentially have here is a positive tangent. And so when you plug in this, oops. When you plug in the pi uh, over 2, uh, what you actually get here, and this is weird, um, when you plug in a pi over 2, tangent pi over 2 at 90 degrees, it's actually undefined. And so how do we know what's really going on? Do I need to do more lopi towels? Is the answer just undefined? What is the calculus answer kind of thing? Um, well, this is actually a very tricky one. It's got to be number one. Your first question's got to be super tricky. Um, that's, a, that's an audible sigh right there. <laughs> I mean... Your first question should not be this tricky. I'm just going to go ahead and say, because the rest aren't that bad. Uh, here's your pi over 2, and we're on the right side with that plus sign. And so if you notice your tangent graph, it's going down, down, down on the right side. So what is your answer? It's negative infinity. Um, that was it. Done. So uh, basically in these cases here, undefined, in calculus land, let's not try to do undefined, if at all possible. Let's try to do infinities and stuff. What, what does that mean? And so in this particular case, it's negative infinity and not a positive or something else infinity. You can even test this stuff out. So what if you had done tangent of the pi over 2 uh, plus 0 0.0001, 
if you go to your calculator, you're going to get a negative 9999.999. Um, and so that, yeah, that's basically negative infinity there. Um, so that's one way. Here's another way. And I know that I'm cheating here. And, and that's going to be okay because sometimes that's just what we need to do. What if I started right here and I had my cosine x over 1 minus sine x like this and they said figure it out. Well, the basic tried and true method, method for me is to actually plug in that pi over 2 plus 0.0001 uh, into uh, x. 0, 0, 0, 001. Uh, again, however many zeros, I don't know. It's all subjective and it kind of depends on the problem. And we're doing plus that amount because we're on the right side in particular. Make sure that these are the same. If you put three zeros, you better put three zeros there. Otherwise, it really, truly could be messed up, and you don't want that. Uh, I'm just going to real quick do this in my calculator. I don't have this in my notes, uh, but it is a legitimate method uh, for finding out these kind of answers. Again, I did mention that I'm cheating, didn't I? Uh, it is a cheating method, but I call it a legitimate cheating method. So, you know, um, give me a second here because I think I messed up on something. Okay, so I tried to type it in, and I got 1.027, so I'm going to add a couple more zeros and see what happens. Maybe I mistyped something on the calculator. Yeah, well, okay. Maybe I mistyped something. Anyways, I'm not getting the right answer, uh, apparently. <laughs> oh, you know what? Degree in radium mode. Yup. So, um... Yeah, make sure you're in radium mode when you're doing all this. Math error, there we go, there, I finally got it. Um, so, degree in radium mode, <laughs> just as a small reminder, I know this is kind of a little ad-lib. There we go, all right, negative 1999.99 uh yeah negative infinity okay so uh, don't put too many zeros or apparently it doesn't work it'll just say at math error undefined uh but and make sure you're in radio mode so let's go ahead and put that down here small things like that happens um so there you go you can always go back and do this manually i don't recommend it because sometimes it's not going to be as easy and when eventually we're taking derivatives and stuff you're uh, like like liter legitimate derivatives and limits and all this flying stuff around the, all over the place. Uh, you're going to need the skill. Okay, you're going to have to use the skill in the future for sure. I can tell you 100%. I was using it in calculus two the other day in class. So and it was really tricky. And it took me literally the like the all day and then the next day and I finally figured out uh, with some help what the problem was. And it was just a lopy towels thing. Uh, so yeah, small stories moving on. So here's another question. Uh, let's figure this guy out. The L'Hopital's method. So if I plug in a zero as it is right now, I would get, uh, E to zero is a one. So one minus one and then sine of zero is a zero. And you can see that we get zero, zero, which indicates to me that we should be using L'Hopital's. Uh, so let's do it again. So I'm going to say equals right here. The derivative of the top of the bottom. So the six is actually going to come down. Like that, the one goes away, derivative sine is a cosine. And when I plug in a zero now, it's six times e to those zeros a one, and then that's a one, and so we just get a plain old six. This should have been your first problem, okay? Not that other crazy, goofy, whatever it is. Um, this is a much better problem for the first problem. But hey, you know, I don't make the homework up, I just follow it. So, 44032, next question. Limit as x goes to infinity, I'm going to try to make that, that infinity a little better, uh, of ln of x all squared divided by 5x. And so when I plug in the infinity, I got infinity squared over infinity. Oh, the answer is just infinity because they cancel, right? Whoa, 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 whoa. Whoa, whoa, whoa. No, 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 no. I mean, we might have to say that eventually at some point but that is not the not the goal here today we're just seeing that we have infinity over infinity which basically tells me i need to do lopi tals and so equal sign like literally equals here we go i'm gonna do it all over again here 
Derivative of the top and bottom. Notice that it, we got a square, so the two comes down, leave the inside alone. Now it's a one power, and now the derivative of the inside, all divided by the derivative of that would just be a five. You know what's funny is that whenever you rewrite this, that x actually comes down, and you get the x in the bottom again, which whenever you actually do your limits and stuff like that, you get infinity over infinity again. And so you need to do lopy tails again. This is not uncommon. This is normal to have to do it a couple times, perhaps. Uh, but notice that I'm going to be using this one because it's more simplified. So 2 times 1 over x, and then derivative of bottom is a 5. And so we get 5x here. When we put in our infinity down there, it's basically 2 over infinity, which actually results in a 0. Uh, and that's good. Again, it's okay to have answers that are infinity and answers that are zero and everything like that, that is no problem here. That is normal. This is calculus. That's what happens. So let's keep going. I got sine of 7x times cosecant of 3x. Now, all of the other problems have been uh, blatant. And what do I mean by that? This is a fraction. This is a fraction. This is a fraction. And we need a fraction... See, it's a fraction. We need a fraction in order to get this lopy tails to work. Okay, so we need a fraction to get things to work. And this one doesn't have a fraction. And so it's not as blatant. It doesn't say, oh, well, you know, we're going to use lopy tails here. But if you know anything about the trig stuff, which I'm hoping you do, you know that this is a 1 over sign. And so you could simply just put that in the denominator. Okay. And now we have a fraction. Now, things will get worse in the future where there's no way to get a fraction, and you have to force a fraction. Uh, but again, we'll do that not right now. <laughs> um, so how do I do this one? I'm going to plug a 0 into both of these guys. Sine of 0 is a 0, and so then we need uh, lopy tails, okay? So equals, like literally this answer is the same as derivative here. I would have the 7 come out. And then here we have the 3 come out. Again, sine goes to cosine. And uh, when you plug in a 0 here, you get cosine of 0 is a 1. And you can see that my answer would be 7 thirds. Could you have looked at the original and seen that right here? Yeah. But do you trust that every time? What if it were two cosines like that? Would it be the same? What if it were a sine and a cosine? Would it be the same? What if he had some tangents? Would it be the same? I don't know. Uh, so limit as x goes to 0 of x times 6 to the x divided by 6 to the x minus 1. All right. So I don't know derivatives with different bases, but I'm going to have to tell you that on the side here. I have it in my notes. So my derivative of 60x is actually, <laughs> this is really weird math here, derivative of e to the ln 6 times x. So I basically just rewrote this into this format here. And when I take the derivative, the ln 6 comes down to the front and leaves the e ln 6x, x, x and then a 6, and then an x. Uh, but then this converts back. So ln 6 times 6 to the x, that's your actual derivative. So this is all on the side. Uh, but basically, when you're taking a derivative of these two guys right here, you're going to have to just basically put an ln6 in the front and call it, okay? Um, let's just see if it even applies. Lopy tails, does it apply? So we plug in a 0, we get a 0. Plug in a 0, I get 1 minus 1 is a 0, so yes. Uh, 0 over 0, Lopy tails, here we go. Do you have to verify that? Yes. In this section, maybe, maybe not, but uh, because obviously we're just doing Lopy tails. Um, but as you keep going, yes, it's got to, I mean, it's not always low tails. It's just, it doesn't always look like that. Um, so we got a product rule in the top. So, um, the derivative of the first times the original of the second, then you leave the second, the first one alone, derivative of the second is that ln six, uh, six to the X. I know that's really weird looking, but that's just what it is. The one is going to go away and you're going to get your ln six times 6 to the x here as well. So I can actually factor out 
a six city X from both the top and the bottom. Something kind of like this and they can cancel. And if I plug in now that zero right here, I would get one over LN six. And that's actually your answer. Four, four, oh, five, nine. Um, I've got the limit as X approaches zero of one minus six X to the one over X. Okay, first off, pause. Is this Lopi Tals? No. Um, is this weird? Yes. <laughs> this is a classic problem right here. And gosh, I think we're going to do like three of these guys um, in, in just this one section. And I, they just keep beating it. And it, that's okay. You know, that's okay. We're going to be learning. And of course, that's good. So what if you do plug in a zero? To so get a zero right here, you get a one. And then up here, you got basically one over zero is going to be infinity. So you got one to the infinity power. And you're like, oh, well, that's just one. Anything to the one, uh, anything to the power, okay, one to any power is still a one. Y yeah, kind of. No, not really. Uh, this is one of those lopy towels indeterminate forms. The book certainly has all of these listed. This is one that I did not list. If you go back, 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 back. I said these two guys are important, right? But that there were more. Uh, and I just didn't list them. Well, this is one of those. Did you need this, though? Well, I'm going to tell you, this is already weird. You should expect this to be a Lopi Tals. Just going to say that, okay? You don't need all this to tell you that. Um, so what, what do we do? What do we do with this kind of problem here? Uh, what you actually have to do, and this is kind of weird, you're going to say Y equals all the stuff, and so then you're going to LN both sides. I'm going to write that down. LN both sides sides now this is the strangest thing ever um your limit actually comes out but your ln needs to go inside like that proper math etiquette that's what it looks like you ln both sides and you, like what where did this even come from i know <laughs> i know it's weird that's just part of it but why so that um i can move this one over x down to the front Again, the limit always stays on the far side. You don't you don't put this on the outside of the limit or anything like that. He's on the far outside always. He's not like a variable. He's more like just a label. He's just kind of saying, hey, we're going to have to do this. Uh, maybe like a reminder note. He's just a note on the side to remind you. Anyways, so I've now moved the 1 over x to the front. And what are we doing? Well, notice here, this is actually denominator, isn't it? And so then I got ln 1 uh, minus 6x over x. See, it's a fraction. To me, that looks like a low town. So when I plug in the 0, I get a 0 here. ln of 1 is a 0. So 0 over 0, low p tails. All right, so then, again, ln of y is equal to, and at the same limit x goes to 0 of the derivative of this thing. The derivative of ln is 1 over stuff. And then I take the derivative of that stuff and multiply it. It's a um, chain rule. And then derivative of x is just a 1. Uh, you can see that yet again, I force myself into this fraction action like this. But when I plug in a 0 now, I get negative 6. Is that your final answer? No, 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 no. No, 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 no. Ln six, or I'm sorry, ln y is equal to uh, negative six. You e both sides now, and so then your actual answer is e to the negative six. Wow. Okay. Yeah, you're gonna have to do that a few more times today. <laughs> That's okay. This is part of it. Uh, it. We're learning different techniques. Limit as x goes to zero of the square root of one plus seven x minus the square root of 1 minus 2x, and all divided by x. Um, what? <laughs> so, yeah, this is kind of strange here. I plug in a 0, and I'm going to get square root of 1 minus square root of 1 all over 0. So that's 0 over 0. Again, low towels. You already knew it would happen because we're in this section. 
but I just want to make sure that you're verifying with me what I'm doing here. So I need a derivative of the top, and these are both half powers, so the half power comes to the front. Now it's a negative one half, derivative of the inside is a seven. Repeat the process here. Negative two. Uh, and then all divided by derivative of the x is just going to be a 1. So that's kind of nice. Let's clean this thing up a little bit. So I've got 7 halves. Actually, let me rewrite it like this. i got 7, and then I've got a 2 square root of 1 plus 7x. And then over here, the 2s are going to cancel, and the negatives are going to cancel. And so you basically just have the square root in the bottom, and that's it. Okay. Um, can I plug in my 0 now? Uh, yeah, so plug in a 0, you get a square root 1 here. Square root of 1. And so I got 7 halves plus 1 is, uh, well, I got 4.5 is my answer. I don't know why I put 4.5, but that's fine. Um, yay! Like, I mean, it's, it's like 9 halves, basically, right? So, um, but I put 4.5 because I felt like it, so there you go. All right, uh, four, four, zero, zero, eight. I've got the limit as x goes to zero of e to the two x minus e to the negative two x uh, minus four x, and then all divided by x minus sine of x. Who comes up with this stuff? Really? <laughs> that was more of a joke than anything. Uh, this is just practice. We're just practicing. Are you going to use this in the real world? Are you going to use this after your, this class here? I mean, maybe. If you go into Cal 2, you'll definitely use it. There's something. <laughs> not, a, not a great answer. I know. Um, I would say that some people will actually use this. It just, it just depends on what your job is. But it's definitely a problem that we have to think through. And so, what do we do to get this done? Um, well, first, if I plug in the zero everywhere, I got one... 1 and a 0, 0 and a 0. So ultimately, that's going to be a 0 of a 0 and lopy tails. Um, now, let's do it again. Now, the limit as x goes to 0 of derivatives. 2e to the 2x. The negatives are going to cancel, making a positive 2e to the negative 2x. And then minus the 4. Bottom, you get a 1. And the sine will go to a cosine. When you plug in a 0 here, you're going to get 2 plus 2 minus 4, uh, and then 0 minus, or I'm sorry, 1 minus 1, uh, which is again 0 over 0, and this still tells me we do lobby tails. Okay. Derivative again, 4 e to the 2x, uh, and a negative 4 e the negative 2x that 4 will go away the 1 goes away the negative cosine will go to a positive sign actually when you plug in 0 you get 4 minus 4 over 0 and again lopy towels did they make this problem up on purpose the answer is yes someone was being clever and thought it was funny to include it uh, in WebAssign. Okay. So, I mean, it's just one of these classic kind of problems. you got to do a lot of lopy towels. Uh, plug it in 0. Finally, here we get 8 plus 8. And then you get a 1. And so then you got 16. Cool. Done. And that's Okay. It's cool. It's cool to do a couple extra. It's kind of it's neat to kind of see these kind of problems. Uh, I'm not complaining. I think it's fun. So next question, we got limit as x goes to infinity. Ew. Infinity of x to the 7, e to the negative x to the 6. Again, it's like stacking things. Um, but notice it's not a fraction. So we have to force it into a fraction in order to use, or at least check, lopy towels. Now, this one's an interesting problem, and I'll show you what goes on. We got infinity, e to the infinity, and so you got infinity over infinity makes uh, lopy towels again. Okay. But here's the thing. If you were to skip ahead in your math career to calculus 2, 
and you're going through uh, comparisons of functions as you go to infinity and that kind of thing, uh, you can automatically see the answer to this, okay? I'm just going to say that there's a way to just know the answer without having to do all this. You see this, and you're like, oh, jump to the end, and you got the answer. Um, but what I want to do is I want to follow the rules for a little bit here, okay? And uh, that's a good thing. That's a good thing. If I could draw an infinity. So um, let's take some derivatives. So I got 7... Uh, x to the 6, and then this is going to be very strange. The derivative here is going to be um, a 6x to the 5th, and then e to the x to the 6. And then I take the derivative again, or I'm, I'm taking the limit again. So I got infinity over infinity again, uh, lopi tails. And you know what? Let's do it one more time, and then I'll show you the pattern. We're almost there. So uh, bring the 6 down. So we got, what, 56 is it? I think it doesn't really matter. No, 42. I'm sorry. That's 8 times 6. 42. My bad. It does not matter. Um, here we got a product rule. And <laughs> I'll show you what I put in my notes. I actually just said we have product rule. <laughs> I just put that in my notes. Because I didn't really care. And we we get infinity over infinity and lopi dowels and da 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 um, There's a reasoning to, behind not having to do all of this. So, here's the thing. 7 power, 6 power, 5 power, 4, 3, 2, 1, 0 power. And, and what you're going to eventually end up with, blah, 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 is going to be the limit as x goes to infinity of a constant number divided by a big mess. Okay, that's basically what's going on here. And when you plug in the infinity, you're going to get your constant value. But when you plug in that infinity here, you'll end up with an infinity. And so let's just do like 1 over infinity, just as an example of what's going on here. Uh, well, that yields a 0. That yields a 0. That's actually your, your answer. That's it right there. Uh, so I have my little note here. It says, notice the top will eventually go to a constant. But at that time, the bottom will still have an x, thus infinity. So uh, this is good. The answer is 0. Could you have eventually just looked at this to know what's going on? It's not because there's a 7 and a 6 and all that other stuff. That is definitely not the case. Uh, the reasoning behind it is because this is right here is a polynomial, and this is an exponential. So you got polynomial, and you got exponential. And the polynomial is smaller, and the exponential is bigger. Okay? Now that's... That's, again, pretty advanced topics, and we'll see that in Calculus 2. Uh, if I really, really see the need for it here eventually, then I'll do it here in Cal 1, but I, I doubt it. Okay, next question. So I got x uh, to the power of ln of 6, and then divided by, because we can't just keep it all uh, nice mathy type, uh, 1 plus ln of x. Wow. What is this craziness? Well, this before we even do anything, you could try that uh, other lopi tau indeterminate form kind of stuff. Uh, but this, in this case, I'm, I'm not going to go down, down that road. Uh, I'm just going to know that I need to ln both sides. And we've already done this before. Limit. Okay, ln of all this stuff. Okay. And then you could take all the stuff to the front. Technically, there's a limit right here as well. I don't... Just whatever. There should be a limit over here. Uh, but I don't I don't really care. It's... That, that's not going to affect us. At all. What is affecting me is how tiny this font is. Okay. And so we need to make it a fraction, of course. And so I've got x ln of 6 divided by 1 plus ln x. Notice that that's a denominator. Uh, when I plug in the infinity, I get infinity over infinity, uh, which is lopi tails. Okay. And so I say now uh, the limit as x goes to infinity of... Okay, of this guy. So uh, this is a constant right here. So basically x goes to a 1, leaves the constant alone, and then derivative ln is 1 over stuff. And 
if you plug in infinity right now, what we get is 1 over infinity, which is a 0. So ln of 6. But that's not my answer of y is equal to ln of 6. And yes, you can cancel your lns, and there you go. I got one last question, but it takes up a whole page. So you know that's got to be a great question. Uh, I'm not trying to skip any uh, easy ones or hard ones or anything. I, uh, I purposely choose some that look kind of difficult, and I am sure that I did this one on purpose. All right. Yep. I know I did this one on purpose because here's the thing. I don't know the answer. Just looking at it, just between you and me, a lot of these I could just kind of know without having to do lopy towels because I have the skills from Calculus 2 and Calculus 3. And you might be thinking right now, well, why don't you teach me those? Well, it would take a whole other set of stuff. And technically, I do have my Cal 2 videos on YouTube. So, I mean, I guess you can go ahead and start learning. Um, but regardless... Um, there, there's a lot of lopy towels that eventually you will just be able to see the answer and just kind of get. This one here I did not know, and it's it's difficult. It's a really tough problem. So let's see if we can get this one together, hopefully. Um, first off, if you plug in infinities, we're going to get all kind of weird indeterminate forms. I don't really know. Uh, what I wanted to focus on is saying we need to do ln of both sides, and that is okay. Now, we do ln of both sides because of that little power, which, just like every other time, I'm going to bring to the front. And so I've got a 5x plus 1 times, make sure you use parentheses right there. I was just about to not do that. And that would have been bad. Okay, pause for a second. This is a perfect example. So I've got this limit. I've got to figure it out. I don't, you know, I can plug in and get some stuff, but the, the point is, is that it's not a fraction. I know that you see a fraction right here, and you're thinking, well, that's lopy towels and stuff. Whoa, 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 hold on, hold on. This is numerator, this is numerator. I'm saying, what's down here? I mean, it's a one right now. Great job. That's not lopy towels ready. I can't even figure out if it'd be lopy towels. So what do you do? You force this into the denominator. There's a couple other ways that you can do this problem, but I'm just going to tell you that way, okay? I'm going to force that into my denominator. I'm not saying it's pretty. Did I ever say that this is an easy problem? So when you force it into the denominator, you need to have it in its own fraction. I mean, technically, it was a numerator thing. So what is it doing in the denominator now? That's exactly my point. <laughs> it's like, what's going on here? And, and one other thing that I want to do before I really, really get started on derivatives and stuff is I want to split my ln up a little bit. I think that it'll help in the end. Maybe. If you plug in infinity, you get infinity minus infinity, which is already confusing to me. And I got 1 over infinity is a 0. So 0 over 0, like here. I got infinity minus infinity, and then 1 over infinity. And so is that a 0? And then is that a 0? And so lopy towels? I mean, all of this is screwy. The point is, is just do lopy towels, and hopefully it'll work. And so let's do some lopy towels derivatives. Derivative ln is 1 over stuff. Chain rule, multiply by the derivative of the inside. Same thing on the other side, 1 over stuff, derivative of the inside. And then uh, this guy here is technically to the negative 1 power. So if you wanted to rewrite this, that's a plus 1, yeah. To the negative 1 power, you bring the negative 1 down, you leave the inside alone, and now it's a negative 2 power, derivative of the inside. It's going to be a 5. Well, at least you can cancel a 5 everywhere. That's something. Um, and so I've got fractions all over the place. And this is technically a negative 1 over 5x plus 1 all squared. Uh, and so that's awesome. Now, I have an idea. Oh, I see. What did I do there? 
Hmm. Okay, well, this is not a pretty idea, but I'm, I'm going to still do it. So this is technically numerator right here. And so what I'm going to do is I'm going to toss this up to the numerators, both of them. And that minus sign is also going to change the signs. So I've now got a negative and then x plus 1 squared over the 5x minus 3. And now I've got a plus sign, the 5x plus 1 all squared, and then the 5x. Okay. Anyways. Um, okay, cool, cool. Now what? Well, um, we need a common denominator to make sure that Lopi Tals is still going to work. And so, gamma denominator, here we go. I got a negative uh, x plus 1 squared, 5x plus the 4, and then I got a positive 5x plus 1 squared, 5x minus 3, and all divided by 5x minus 3 and the 5x plus the 4. Wow. And uh, if you plug in infinities, you'll probably need lobby tails. So... <laughs> I, actually, you know what's kind of interesting? You might not. Uh, what I want to do here is I want to foil. Yep, I want to foil it. And you're like, what? Yeah, yeah, I know. Uh, there, is there a better way to do this problem? Maybe? I mean, this is the last problem that I have. So it might be one of the last ones on your homework. I can't remember. Um, but here's the thing. Let's, let's foil this thing out. And let's not foil it too quickly. Kind of hang out with me for a minute. Watch this. So, look, I got a square here, I got this negative, and I got this 5x. And so, what would I get from there? It's going to be, uh, that's 25, 125, so negative 125 x cubed plus blah, 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 right? Uh, over here, similar situation. And so then I got a positive 125 x cubed plus blah, 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 blah. Uh, and then in the bottom, if you take these guys here, uh, you get a 25x squared plus blah, 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 blah. But here's the thing. Uh, these guys actually cancel. And so what we have now is something within the blah, blah that's actually legitimate. So I actually do need a foil just a tiny bit more. And maybe I can get something here. So I'm looking for squares maybe. I don't know. Maybe they cancel, too. Uh, so we're looking for the blah, blah. All right. So I got a 5x squared times a 5x squared times a 4x. And, um, well, let me just go ahead and give you what all this stuff is going to result in. I have it in my notes, of course. So let me just go ahead and do the whole thing for you, okay? Like, minus the blah, blah, uh, minus these things that canceled. So I'm just not going to write those. I got negative 100x squared. Uh, I've got a negative 50x squared. I've got a minus 40x. I've got a negative 20, a 10x, minus 8. And then I, I have to keep going, so just like a new line here. Uh, I have my negative 75x squared, uh, a positive 50x squared, minus 30x, plus 10x, and then minus the 6. Uh, these guys cancel, these guys cancel, um, so, and then on the bottom, I still got the 25x squared, uh, plus blah, 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 that I don't really care about that much. I'll show you what I mean. So, if you combine your squares here, I got a negative 175x squared with a lot of other stuff, and then in the bottom, I got a 25x squared plus a lot of other stuff, and what I'm doing here, as I go to positive infinity, we're looking for the horizontal asymptote now notice that my degree at the top and bottom are the same and so you could just look at the front fraction the front fraction and so 175 over 25 yields a negative 7 that's not your answer because we still have to do the ln of y is equal to negative 7 e both sides and then now now we have our answer y is equal to e to the negative 7 Wow, oh my goodness, and I didn't even do all the math. But it's good enough for the day. All right, hopefully that wasn't terribly confusing. The main thing is that if you do all the math, eventually things cancel and you could do uh, horizontal asymptotes and stuff. 
Could you do Lopi Towels right here instead? Yeah, I guess it would just take you forever more and you get the same answer. So look for those kind of tricks like that, okay? All right, I'm done. Thank you very much. Have a great day.